Welcome into another episode of Ravens Reports. We got so much to talk about today. Mark Andrews was in a car accident, but he's okay. The offensive line coach, Joe D, will be out for the foreseeable future. We got the possibility of Tyler Huntley coming back to Baltimore as he's on the roster bubble with the Cleveland Browns. And a look at some other quarterback options like Ryan Tannehill, as so many people in the comments section below have been asking me about the backup quarterback position. We also got some really exciting news. Todd Munkin said yesterday he wants to call more screens, and we just so happen to have one of the best screen-catching running backs in the NFL in Derrick Henry. We got all that and more. Plus, we got Jeff Zerebeck going through his 53-man roster prediction, which we're going to break down. So let's go ahead and dive into the content. At number one, let's talk about Mark Andrews real quick. He was in a car accident today on the way to practice. John Harbaugh reiterated the importance of wearing a seatbelt because it was a pretty serious accident, but he came out without a single bump, bruise, or scrape. He was already scheduled for a vet day today, so he didn't practice, but he should be back very soon. Mark Andrews and Lamar Jackson are going to continue to be a dynamic force together, but uh, there's another guy in that tight end room that's going to be part of it as well. That's Isaiah Likely. Several reports that their chemistry keeps growing stronger and stronger. Isaiah Likely was one of Lamar Jackson's favorite targets again today as Mark Andrews was out of practice. These two tight ends are going to cause problems for opposing defenses, man. They're going to cause so much conflict, especially in 12 personnel. Are you going to run it? Are you going to throw it? Are you going to have hard play action? Are you going to boot? Are you going to screen, man? The the offense has so many options. And number two, a big blow to the offense here. John Harbaugh talked about Joe D., who uh, underwent a surgery this summer and had complications stemming from the operation. He'll be out for a significant period. John Harbaugh calls it a big loss, a big blow. He's going to be missed very much as Joe D has been very involved with game planning. The Ravens have had a top 10 uh, run blocking and pass blocking offensive line You know, the last few years with Joe D. He's a big part of that, so he will definitely be missed here. Joe D'Alessandris, uh, we love Joe D. And, uh, he had a surgery early in the summer, uh, and he came back a little bit. Uh, uh, you know, some complications have arisen from it, so he's in the hospital right now, and he'll be focusing on his health for the next significant period of time. And it's it's a blow. I mean, it's a blow because he's a great football coach. He's beloved by the players, by the coaches. He's uh, he's he's one of our top. He's a top game planner. He's a top coach. He's a huge part of our offense, and uh, he's going to be missed very much. But we're going to be much more concerned about his health and his welfare and his well-being going forward. He's got his daughters back with him. His daughters have been amazing all summer. They're the absolute best. I know he cherishes those girls, so uh, it's going to be okay. So I don't know all the details with the O-line coach, Joe D, but um, I've already prayed for him, and I do believe in a God that heals. I know John Harbaugh and several other players on the team are men of faith as well that put their faith in Jesus in all circumstances. And uh, the same thing here with Joe D. You know, I wish him the best. They, he was talking about his daughters going to be there to help take care of him. I'm not sure all the details of what's going on, but obviously that it's bad enough that, you know, he's not able to be around anymore. At number three, man, I've seen so many questions in the comments about the backup quarterback position. I just saw one a few minutes ago here um, because Josh Johnson didn't have a particularly, you know, great performance against the Philadelphia Eagles. He was four for 12 with 62 yards. However, it's also worth mentioning the offense as a whole didn't really wow and didn't really, you know, perform that great as a unit and that we have seen much higher play out of the vet quarterback, Josh Johnson. And Jeff Zerebeck in his 53-man roster prediction didn't even have, uh, you know, the other backup quarterback, Devin Leary, even making the roster, even after being a recent draft pick. So this article came out today for a, a Browns roster prediction. At the quarterback position, they, they projected Deshaun Watson, Jamison, Jameis Winston and Dorian Thompson Robinson making the roster with Tyler Huntley uh, being on the outside looking in. They said it's DTR versus Huntley for the number three job. And right now they give the edge to Thompson Robinson because he's been the better thrower in camp and is under a rookie contract through 2026. So Tyler Huntley has been a nice backup here in Baltimore and definitely I think and could push Josh Johnson for that number two backup spot just as he was the last few years. Another guy out there that's been getting talked about a lot is Ryan Tannehill. Obviously, you know, he's been a starter at this league. He's had some really good seasons as a starter, but he's also definitely a capable backup at this point of his career. He still has arm talent. 
uh, the ability to get the ball to the playmakers. He also has a familiarity with the running back there and Derrick Henry, who he spent years with in Tennessee. The big thing about the backup quarterback position here in Baltimore is like, I just want to see a guy that can just get the most out of the playmakers and run the offense and make good decisions. If Lamar Jackson were to miss any time this year with sickness, or maybe he gets bumped up and misses a few games, you just want to see a guy that not necessarily does all the crazy, you know, gunslinger Lamar Jackson type of throws and scrambles, but just a guy that can get the most out of a Mark Andrews and Isaiah Likely and Zay Flowers and just get the ball to the playmakers. At number four, speaking of Derrick Henry and these playmakers, Todd Munkin said he wants to call more screens this season and that last year they didn't call enough and take enough pressure off the offensive line and obvious, you know, passing downs and situations. There's great news because Derrick Henry, his yards per reception on screens per year, check this out, from Spencer Schultz on Twitter in 2023, 9.8 yards per reception which was fifth best in the NFL in 2022. He had 17.2 yards per screen reception, which was first in the NFL. And then 2021, he had 11 per catch, which was sixth. And it's just absolutely absurd. He's been top six the last three years with the 2022 season averaging 17.2 a pop. And it's going to be effective here in Baltimore because not only do you have to worry about the hard play action with these tight ends eating over the middle or Zay Flowers or Bateman who run you know, in a 4-4 range running past you, you also got to worry about Lamar Jackson with his the element that he adds to the scramble. Derrick Henry, you know, if he peels out on the screen in the opposite direction that Lamar could be scrambling in you know, as like a part of a play design, it could be really dangerous in this offense. Anytime you can get Derrick Henry in space and get him a little bit of a head of steam rolling downhill, it's bad news for the defense. At number five, we got to check out Jeff Zareback's 53-man roster projection because he follows the team very closely, one of the best reporters in the business. Let's take a look. At quarterback, he has two making the roster in Lamar and Josh Johnson. That's if the Ravens don't make a move at that position. He, at running back, he has the Ravens keeping three with Rasheen Ali getting the nod over... Uh, Owen Wright, who I think Owen Wright has outperformed um, Rasheen Ali so far. But Rasheen Ali was just a six-round draft pick this year. Owen Wright was an undrafted free agent last year. And they like the the speed and the burst and the pass-catching ability from Rasheen Ali. We'll see where they go in that direction. But um, I would lean Owen Wright right now. At receiver, Zay Flowers, Bate, Nelson Aguilar, Devontae Walker, Deontay Hardy, who's missed a lot of training camp and time this year, uh, Tylen Wallace. Deontay Hardy was brought in to be the primary kick return, punt return specialist with the new kickoff rules, and Tylen Wallace has made a ton of plays. I think Tylen Wallace has secured his roster spot, um, He not only in training camp, but made a really nice catch again in preseason. A couple other guys to keep your eye on is Russell Gage, who they just signed, Anthony Miller, who's made some nice plays, and the undrafted free agent from Ole Miss and Dayton Wade. At tight end and fullback, he has Mark, Isaiah Likely, Charlie Kohler, and Pat Ricard. That's one of the spots. There's not really much debate. Those are the guys. The receiver room, running back room, and quarterback room, however, that's kind of more unpredictable, more up in the air. But the tight end fullback room, that's locked in. On the offensive line, this will be interesting too. We got Ronnie Stanley, Andrew Voorhees, Linderbaum, Falele, Makari, Rosengarten, Josh Jones, Ben Cleveland, and the rookie from last year going into a second year this year, and Masiala Umoava Lalu. I probably jacked that up real good, but he goes by Sala. And then on the defensive line, we got Matabike, Michael Pierce, Travis Jones, Broderick Washington, and Brent Urban at outside linebacker. Owe, Kyle Van Noyes, your top two outside linebackers with David Ajabo. By the way, he had a strip sack today and has stacked back-to-back -back good practices and uh, clean wins against some of our talented offensive linemen. Owe, Van Noy, Malik Harrison, Adisa Isaac, the rookie third-round pick, Ajabo, and Tavius Robinson. At inside linebacker, he's got Roquan, Trenton Simpson. Those are going to be the two starters. Chris Board who the Ravens signed in free agency after um, he spent last year with the Detroit Lions and before that with the Patriots, and then Josh Ross. A cornerback, this room is really tight. Some guys that should probably make an NFL roster won't. Marlon Humphrey, Brandon Stevens, Nate Wiggins, 
Jalen Armour Davis, TJ Tampa, Ardarius Washington, and Pepe Williams. I guess in this projection, it would be Arthur Marlette getting added to IR or some type of, uh, you know, workaround list where and they maybe be added later. I'm not sure, but Arthur Marlette's definitely going to be on this team. Safety, Kyle Hamilton, Marcus Williams, Eddie Jackson, and the rookie, Sanusi Kane, who's made some plays as well and looked good in preseason. And then, of course, with the specialists, Justin Tucker, Jordan Stout, and Nick Moore. Let me know what you guys think about this projection uh, in the comments section below. We'll definitely do um, one of our own pretty shortly here. It's probably after the second or third preseason game before the final cutdowns. And we'll make sure to get that video out for you guys. As always, smash the like button like Derrick Henry and Patrick Ricard are about to be smashing offensive linemen and linebackers here in just a few weeks, 22 days until the kickoff against the Kansas City Chiefs. I love you guys. I appreciate y'all. Thank you all for tuning in, and we'll see you in the next video. He ran me over.